Good morning, everybody. What's up? How you doing? One second, I need to adjust my settings. There we go. All right. How y'all doing today? <sighs> okay, so. Welcome to the morning podcast. All right, folks. So this is a this is what we call the unedited, unscripted podcast. Um, man, I'm I'm a little I'm a little worked up. So <laughs> well, had a rough night. So just got done recording a podcast with with old Brandon, and uh, actually it was going really well. And at the end, the poor guy decided to bring up a. Uh, I brought up a topic that just you know he didn't know it was a sensitive subject with me so like i I can't talk about what i worked on uh the last past year or so because of ndas and stuff um but i can talk to you about how i feel after working on some stuff um worked on some stuff and i came away from some projects stuff you guys don't if you think you know, you don't know. So if you're like, it must be this thing, it isn't. You just don't know. So, um, but I came away working on some projects, feeling pretty. How do I say this? Lost would not be the word. So I, I, I see this is tough. It's tough for me to say because to say it sometimes, sometimes when you say things, you know, you give them power, but. The gist of it was that Brandon had brought up why I don't have more merch up or t-shirts and stuff with little characters and designs, given that I spent 10 years making licensed t-shirts, right? And I've sold millions of dollars worth of t-shirts. And the short, really polite, respectful answer to that is that uh, the kinds of t-shirts that sell on the internet aren't really the same that sell in a department store. They tend to favor either really uh, kitschy ideas, flowery artistic things, or bootleg parody shirts. You know, like Calvin and Hobbes, but it's like Han Solo. Um, I I never did any of that stuff. The stuff I did in License Apparel was I took legitimate licenses. Uh, You know, you can find artistic interpretations of that. You can find topical humor interpretations uh slogans and feelings and and things that are popular at the time and then plug those in and <clears throat> people generally are already a fan of that property and then does that design or idea within that property speak to that person that doesn't translate to me putting like uh like a coffee cup on a shirt you know that's like a monster with like brains in it and zombies coming out it could be cool but it doesn't quite translate so um to do that sort of thing i i have to like spend time figuring out which way i would go with it and build it all out um and i've just been busy doing other things so it's weird because i actually kind of was hoping to get something like that going but then brandon brought it up and it just unleashed a whole another argument in my head which was what i heard was was why aren't you doing more rob you know like everyone else does stuff why don't you do things too you know, and if you just did these things, you would be internet famous and rich and you'd have hundreds of thousands of followers and people would just, they, they, you'd get, you'd get, you know, 500 people to back Patreons and you could teach them and you could like, I, I wish those arguments, those, those thoughts were true, but um, they are and they aren't. For some people, they are true. You might follow an artist out there that has an unbelievable YouTube following and a Patreon following, and they're always doing great artistic stuff, and they're making big paintings, and they're going to art shows before COVID. Um, they may be doing all that. Uh, I've done all of that, and I can assure you, 
uh, it's gone nowhere. <laughs> um, I'll give you an example, folks. The saucy stuff, the watercolor, the splat. That is like me. Uh, it came from one night I was so fed up with drawing everything perfectly for my freelance and then going to work and doing everything uh, really clean and perfect for licensed properties that I came home and drew a Joker face that was somewhat like, um, who's the artist from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? The guy who did all the art in that, right? Stein, Stein, Stillman, Steinman, I don't know. Um, it's kind of like that, some color. So this is 2011, 12, somewhere around there. And <clears throat> people responded really well to that. So I started doing more splattery, drippy watercolor stuff before it was really big on the internet. You know, I'm not saying I helped popularize that because there was looks like that before, obviously. Um, but it was before it was super a thing. And that look sold really well at cons. And I started for the first time I was making money at cons. Like I went from losing a thousand dollars at a con <clears throat> to maybe making a thousand dollars at a con or two thousand. Never any the kind of money that some of these guys who sell prints, like they have a billion prints, they they make like ten grand. I never made that kind of money, but enough to cover it and to come home with a little bit of, you know, savings money. Um and then it cost me my job. <laughs> Because I did a Kickstarter with six saucy paintings on there, um, and Marvel got mad and found my employer, and my employer dragged me into a room, and they didn't fire me, but I, I had to walk out. They were eventually going, they were, they were trying to find a way, because I hadn't broken any rules, but they were unhappy, so I walked out. And then, because I walked out, they went and black blacklisted me not black blacklisted me from working for any t-shirt company again and now that company owns all the t-shirt companies so i can't work for any t-shirt company so this 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 thing to like do something that's more artsy and become more artistic and maybe more approachable with my art maybe more um i don't know something that could hang on a wall in a coffee shop or something uh cost me my entire career you know, uh, so I get really, really, um, I get real defensive when I hear people tell me, if you just do this thing, it'll solve all your problems. Uh, because it doesn't like, I got a lot of comments when the YouTube channel started, we don't have your info in the, in, in the, in the stuff and you don't do regular weekly uploads. And, and maybe if you just did speed videos and maybe if all your videos were categorized in order and you'd clear links to your merch and you, and you know, easy way to tip you <clears throat> like all those things would add up to something. So I did all those things. It's added up to nothing. <laughs> the YouTube channel has sat at 16,000 people now forever. Um, it's fine. The YouTube channel really, really the YouTube channel is always for me to remember how I made stuff, folks, because I forget. Um, and I thought it would be cool to have a place where you could actually see someone making things in real time versus all these fake, I don't want to say fake, but you, you do know, folks, like when you see a tutorial DVD, there's editing involved. People are drawing at two to four times speed and there's editing and you don't see the real... How did how did they arrive at that solution? How did they get here? How did they get there? It's a show. Like any kind of reality TV, it's a show. So I just wanted to literally put the camera on and start showing people exactly how I make things that are uh, not for me, but for real work. <clears throat> and YouTube, I went to YouTube because initially I was on live stream, but they would only allow 240p videos and they wanted $500 a month to do 720p. And I had my YouTube channel sitting there since 2006. And, you know, so I went there. And then people are like, if you go to Twitch, you can get really big there. Well, I went to Twitch. Never got big there. And then I got a DMCA from Twitch over a video um, a little over under a year ago. I don't know, six months. I don't know. I'm lost track of time, folks. COVID. Um, and so I deleted all the videos. So now I just stream on Twitch and then I upload the videos here. Uh, but look, this is, this is, uh, to get back to what Brandon had said, because I don't want this to drag on too long. Um, dude was trying to be nice. 
but like um the I think like the last thing I need to hear in my life is Rob, why don't you why don't you try harder? You know, like like one of the comments I constantly get is, Rob, if you just drew popular things, like <clears throat> if I spent all my time drawing Fortnite and Deadpools and or Invincible right now is a big rage, that'll get you a bigger following. And I'm like, it was my love of weird random shit that got me to crash and spyro gigs. You know, it's my love of weird random shit that got me the Game Informer covers, you know. Um, it's possible, but a lot of times when you're drawing popular things, people don't want your artistic interpretation of it. They want you to just draw more of what they're used to seeing. So if I drew Invincible and I did my own version of it, it it wouldn't gain me a bunch of new followers, folks. It, it'd be 50-50. People would be like, I like your version, I don't like it. How about this? I enjoy the cartoon. Don't feel any need to draw any Invincible. You know, the day I feel the need to draw it, I'll draw it. Um, same with shirts. Like, if I have a bunch of shirts with stuff on it, it'll be there. Like, the prints will be there. But, you know, the, I I just... It's, 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 it's a perpetual loop, folks. People are going to tell you all the time, if you just did this, this would work out. <clears throat> I heard it with um one second, one second. I'm getting a little the clump here. I believed it when I was younger. I thought if I just went to art college, then I would be able to take my skills up to a professional level, and then I can go out and get a real job drawing. I went to art college and realized I got myself into a lot of trouble because it was not helping. And um, I parlayed that into a t-shirt career while I was in college because. I needed to start earning money. Well, I was working at Kinko's when I was in college, but I wanted an art job while I was still in college because I didn't believe college was art. I went to the Art Institute. I just didn't believe they were going to help me get any kind of art job. And there was a local t-shirt company my friend worked for, and he needed help doing uh, help on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles storyboard cleanups. The, the 2005 cartoon, that one, 2004. He took out a bunch of freelance, and I helped him clean up all those uh, storyboards. And he got me an interview with this art director, and that got me the t-shirt job. I thought I would parlay that into something else, which I did. I eventually parlayed that into a job at Play, a video game magazine. And then we launched a bunch of video game graphic novels, and I thought that was all going to work out until the economy crashed and wiped out my entire everything. It wiped out my job, my comic job, my magazine art job, um, me going to cons, <clears throat> And I tried to make that work for a year or so until I did, I was able to go back to t-shirts. The t-shirt companies were mad that I left. So I was in like jail until they were willing to get me the invite. Then they gave me the invite, came back, and I was there until the, the saucy thing happened. And now I can't go back to t-shirts. I can't. I've sold some of them. I've sold more. My numbers are at the very, at the got to be the top three in the history of that company. And I can't get work anywhere doing anything. And now that the whole industry thinks you need to do Illustrator or Vector Art to do t-shirts, they really, they really don't want your stuff. You know, it's not the case, folks. We never did t-shirts with Vector Work. That just came from artists who didn't know how to draw, wanted to be able to trace everything around 2007 or 8. And uh, then when Mondo came in with the whole tracing head Star Wars poster things around 2007 or 8, yeah, around there, um, everyone went in that direction. And so now we're, now we're here. Now we're here at this, this impetus of what to do with my career. I just came off a job that did not go well for me. Um, I did well, all things considered. Everyone on the team felt I did well, but the overall employer... <clears throat> uh, the whole process was not good. It was not good. And it I haven't questioned my want to even, that's not want, like, should I even bother continuing to do this, you know, doing whatever, drawing? Because <clears throat> um, what's the word I'm thinking of? I don't know what I am as an artist. <laughs> am I a concept artist? <clears throat> am I a... Uh, one second. Man, folks. I'm um, sorry. 
am I a cartoonist? I don't know what I am. You know, I'm trying to build that up. But the last job gave me a giant identity crisis. And I'm getting through it, but it's not easy. And it sucks because I have to do it all while I'm, I don't earn money. You know, like I'm, I got some stuff coming in from a couple indie games, but that's that's not paying your mortgage money. So it's never easy, folks. It's never easy. Um, I will work it out, but like, uh, this, this isn't so much, by the way, like a conversation where I'm like, please tell me how great I am so I can keep doing this. It's fine. It's more like, like anything else I do, folks, it's just to let you know that you're not alone and feeling this way. You're not alone in your art taking longer than it looks like everyone else is making. You're not alone in trying to figure out how to draw basic stuff better. All right. And we all have to do this within the confines of an ever shrinking, what feels like an ever shrinking expectation, ba expectation, ever shrinking uh, box of acceptability. If you just do it this way, if you just do it that way, if you just do it this way, oh, we took away that way. Oh, we do this. If you don't do that, if you don't do this, like everyone's telling you what to do to be successful. Um, when you need to know that I've done a lot of things that people would consider to be successful. And my career is filled with nonstop failure, more failure than success. If I had some good wins, I'm proud of the wins I got. Um, but it always felt like those wins come with a little asterisk on there. Um, the spiral crash stuff being the thing that has done the best for my career, like that I'm proud of, no asterisks. But everything else, giant asterisks. Game Informer cover, asterisks. I'm super proud of that. But they were unhappy with something they felt I did at the end. And when that cover came out, they didn't promote that I drew it. That was a retribution. So it was like, it's just, you know, like I, I got to work on Transformers and G.I. Joe's at IDW. And I thought that was going to lead to a IDW, like a new career in comics. And... They didn't like the way I was drawing and switched me out uh, from the A covers to the D covers and then told me since my stuff didn't sell, they just stopped returning phone calls. I thought maybe I could uh, hit up people who needed cover arts and variants for like Kickstarters, right? Give them a lot of high quality stuff at an acceptable, reasonable price. And that was working. And no Kickstarter, only one, uh, Lauren Marshall actually printed one of my covers. Everyone else just one one group just never even two groups didn't even publish or mention me ever, and another guy was nice enough to at least make it a print and shove it in the book, so that was cool. But like, it's just frustrating, man. It's just endlessly frustrating. So it's like I have to now, you know, like my whole thing is I've been regrouping. You know, we got a nice win with Berserk Boy this week, and. I've been like, okay, let me do this with that. And I'm going to do this. And I can't tell you what it is yet because if I announce it, you know, everyone will be asking or wondering for the next six months. And But I have some stuff. And then right at the, you know, nth moment, here's good old Brandon asking me, how come you don't do more of this stuff? And the other component to that would be like, I love Brandon, man. I got a lot of love for him. He's, he's my best friend right now, and he has been for a long time. You know, I consider him like family, but it's like... My job should be making things, and Brandon's job should kind of be like helping to promote it. And what ends up happening is Brandon just wants me to do all the promotion while he's in his room drawing, and I can give him art tips. So now I spend all the time doing videos and editing and thumbnails and podcast planning and all this stuff and he's just sitting there drawing all day shouldn't i be the one making the stuff right i mean no offense to brandon's stuff but like we had this conversation so it's just frustrating <clears throat> but um again no easy answers just tomorrow i wake up and <clears throat> move forward on the next thing on the next thing but I won't lie, folks. I wish I could tell you exactly what happened on some gigs. I wish I could tell you. God, I wish I could. Years from now, I probably can, but I just can't risk 
any more crazy setbacks. But this one was tough, man. Like, this one was really tough. I've never questioned my. The, I, the, t the closest I've come to this was twice in my life. I have questioned this twice. So twice this is happening. Once in 2012, when the Game Fan 2010 what a thing didn't work out, and I went back to t-shirts. Right before I went back to t-shirts, I thought maybe I won't do any art. I'll just go back to Kinko's or something. But I went back to t-shirts, and then I thought, but this is just what I'll do. I'll just do t-shirts, and I'm just going to stay away from the internet. And then Kickstarter happened. And Kickstarter... I was able to see that, oh, wow, maybe I can conjure up my ideas now and just ship them directly to people the way I always dreamt it to be. Now that tanked my whole career. And then before that was, again, art college. Art college made me not ever want to draw again. You know, it really did. It's constantly being told to do less, folks. I'm always being told to do less. Do less. You do too much. If you don't try so much. If you, you know, when you do less, that's what we really like. Um, I've been hearing that from art directors my whole life, like in t-shirts, you know, just, you take it too far, just that far right there. And then, um, Josh used to tell me that too. And so this is why when I did the 2013 Kickstarter with all the sketches, there's a bunch of like, they're super angular and drawn really fast. And people were like, some of the comments I was getting at the time with fan, from the fans were like, this looks rushed. But I was like, no, it's good enough. People just love it, man. They just love everything you do. And then you end up becoming a worse artist producing a ton of bull stuff man just a bunch of bull crap and um and then when i get into games you know a lot of the times i was being told do less do less do less do less and i'm like look maybe they're right i'll do less doesn't help because then they're like you're not doing enough why don't you present present better ideas then they pick the other artists and the other artists you know they're trying they're doing their best um some of them just magically spit out awesomeness guys like me takes more work it takes work for me folks like i i never i don't know how many times i can iterate this i never expected to be able to crawl my way out of the uh of the the, the crap hole i grew up in to become an artist um for a living ever let alone work on games I had the want to and the passion and I was pushing, but in my pushing, I also pushed almost everyone away from girlfriends, uh, women. I, I should, I, you know, I'd wanted sincerely to marry at one point and pushed everyone away because I just couldn't deal with handling multiple things. I could just focus on the art and survival. You know, like the art is hard enough for me. And so when I got, you know, my the people that I, I, I respect and love and care about telling me, you know, almost inadvertently reaffirming my worst fears about myself that I just haven't done enough. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. You know, uh, I feel... I feel better knowing that had this happened 10 years ago, I would have been raging. Um, I went on a rant, but not anger. Just like, like what what more can I do? Why doesn't, you know, show me. I, I need, you know, if people close to me want to tell me to do something better, like I had this exact conversation with Brandon. He was like, this so-and-so does this like this. And then in the same breath, he was like, I've tried to help you with things, but you want them done at a professional level. And so then I have to go, yeah, that guy you want me to be like, he's doing them at a professional level. So you, you expect me to do things at a professional level, but you are unwilling to do the work to get things to a professional level. And we all have to have that gut check on ourselves. That's not like, I don't even think you realize that. Um, you got to have that gut check in yourself too. Are you demanding movies like Star Wars and MCU things and whatever it is you, you know, you're critical of? Are you demanding the things you're critical critical of to do things that you yourself are unwilling to do when in positions of creative authority? A creative, yeah, creative authority. 
because I push myself harder than I ever have with this last gig that I will one day get to talk about. Um, and it was for like nothing, like for sketches. They didn't even, they weren't, I wasn't allowed to do color roughies or anything like how I do. I had to do things the way they do things. They had to look the way they're used to seeing it. I had to think like they would think. And then I was criticized for not thinking creatively or presenting artwork that is inspirational. And I spent five weeks on like one sketch with every line being torn apart and critiqued. And at the very end of it, uh, you're fired. Not really, but like, you know, we won't renew your contract is the way they do it. What's it for? What's it for? What's that all about? Well, it's just one company. Yeah, but what if it's what if it's a company you always wanted to work with? What if it's your hero? What do you love more than what what is the thing you look up to the most ever? And imagine if that thing told you you're not good enough. Even though you not only were doing your best, but doing better than a lot of the people around you. And they're just like, everyone's confused. You know, like it's like trying to tell someone, hey, it's going to be okay. Like, you know, you're going to be okay, but it doesn't help. You still got to deal with the thoughts in your head, right? I'm fortunate that my thoughts in my head just lead to like, I know uh, I'm just, I never want to do this again. And then I give it, you know, a while and then I come back. My thoughts are never dark thoughts. Like I'm, I'm very fortunate that I don't have that problem too. I'm extremely sympathetic to people who do. Because my mother had those kinds of thoughts and um, one of my extended family, but I don't have those kinds of thoughts. I just have like the I'm every I'm worthless comment I ever got from a high from a middle school bully or my parents, you know. Those are the thoughts I <laughs> and they won't leave me. You know? So uh, I'll get through it, folks. This that's what this is all for. It's just it's just so that we know we're not alone in this, right? You you've gone through this, you you know. Pros are going through this. Everyone's going through this. We're all human, and Lord knows, you know, the world needs more empathy, more more humanity, less. You know, I'm so tough. I'm invincible. Nonsense, you know. So, um, yeah, that's it, folks. That's that's the rant. I gotta. I got to get to it. Got a lot of stuff to do today. So thanks for hanging out. Um, please, if you get a chance, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> you know, leave a comment. Uh, it really, the folks, the reason why is because it just encourages YouTube to share the channel. So if you do those things, YouTube, the algorithm will share the channel. That's it. That's what it helps for. Um, don't worry about, you know, Brandon's fine. We're all good. We're buddies. We got. I'm going to post some stuff up here soon enough. Every, everything's good, but, uh, I wasn't going to be able to move on with my day without getting this stuff out of my head. Know how that goes? That's how it goes. So, all right, everybody. Um, I'm out here. You take care. Peace.